All right, well, why don't we get started today? Uh, I'd like to thank you for attending our webinar today. Our presentation today is geared primarily for auto insurance claims adjusters or investigators that want to learn more about vehicle crash data. It's designed for those that have heard of crash data and crash data retrieval, but don't really have much experience with it. We'll pr be providing basic information on the subject here today. And we hope everyone walks away knowing a little bit more than they did before. Uh, this presentation should last about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, you may have some questions along the way and we'd be happy to answer them the best that we can. Uh, you can type in a question at any point in the presentation. We'll be monitoring the questions as they come up and uh, address them accordingly. And we'll also stick around for a little bit after the presentation and we can answer any questions you may have uh, then as well. There are slide numbers located uh, in a yellow box on each slide if you want to reference a particular slide in the presentation. So again, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us here today. I will start with some introductions. My name's Scott Christensen. I've been with Crash Data Group for about four years. Uh, my primary job is providing support to our customers. Uh, I'm a retired police officer. I worked for a city police department in Southern California for 23 years, uh, 18 of which uh, was a traffic accident reconstructionist. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with vehicle crash data and how it can be applied to traffic investigations. Uh, joining me today is Dan Walker, and Dan, I will let you introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Dan Walker. I've been with Crash Data Group for the past three years. Uh, my main job is the uh, account manager for uh, most of our larger insurance companies. As you can see on the screen, I was with Bosch a very long period of time. My last six years with Bosch, I was on the Bosch Crash Data Retrieval Team, so I'm very familiar with the product and technology. And again, I want to say thanks again for joining today from my side, especially the people out east, because this is during your lunch hour, so th thank you. All right, thanks, Dan. So our objectives for today's webinar, uh, we'll briefly go over insurance claim investigations, what you're doing now, and what else is available. Uh, we'll give a brief overview of event data recorders, what they are and how they're used. Uh, we'll discuss some practical applications of how you can use EDR data to enhance your investigations and expose insurance fraud. Uh, we'll briefly discuss client consent issues related to the collection of EDR data, and we'll go over the methods used to retrieve EDR data and the different tools that are available to do that. And finally, we'll talk about some training options that are available so you can get the most out of applying crash data to your claim investigations. So what are you doing now as part of your investigations? And has much really changed over the years? Uh, you likely start by going over party and witness statements. Uh, re-interview the parties. Uh, party statements, as you are probably well aware, can often be self-serving. Uh, witness statements often include what they believe must have happened rather than what they actually saw. So statements, although necessary, can often create more questions about your case than provide answers. And then you likely ex assess the damage to the involved vehicles to see if anything may be inconsistent with statements you've obtained. And don't a lot of your cases end there? Uh, you still have a lot of unanswered questions. You're an investigator. You have a hunch that things aren't adding up. You just don't have the evidence to prove it. Uh, so what else is out there? Uh, crash data retrieval, EDR data, and that's what we're going to be uh, talking about here today. EDR stands for Event Data Recorder, and we'll go into more detail about event data recorders in just a second. EDRs provide unbiased, reliable data. It's real facts, real data. It's not ranges or estimates or opinions. Uh, EDR data is powerful evidence that can answer questions about your case you may not be able to answer otherwise. So what is an event data recorder or an EDR? Uh, EDRs are installed in a vehicle. Uh, EDRs record specific uh, information, uh, technical and vehicle and occupant information for a very brief period of time before, during, and after a crash. Understand EDRs are not continuously recording data. A crash or other significant event must occur for the data to be recorded in the EDR. EDRs are typically a function of a vehicle safety system and are primarily contained in the airbag control module. The airbag control module's primary function is to tell the car when to deploy an airbag. The event data recorder is a secondary function of many ACMs. Uh, data may be contained in other vehicle modules as well. 
Uh, but again, the data is most often contained in and retrieved from the airbag control module of a vehicle. So let's talk about the different data elements you can expect to find in most EDRs. Uh, most event data recorders contain the impact delta V or the change in velocity. Uh, delta V is used to determine the severity of an impact and can be used to assess the potential for injury in a car crash. Most EDRs record five seconds of pre-crash data as well. Pre-crash data is exactly that, it's pre-crash. So what was happening five seconds before impact? Many EDRs record this data in one second or half second intervals and include things like vehicle speed. Uh, so how fast was the car going five seconds before the impact? Four seconds before, three seconds before, et cetera. Other common pre-crash data elements include the brake status, the throttle position, steering input, seatbelt status, uh, occupant detection, and a whole lot more. Uh, in 2012, the federal government began setting some minimum standards on types of data that must be recorded in certain EDRs, but the auto manufacturers are not limited to the amount or types of data that can be recorded. So some EDRs also record uh, things such as ABS activity. Uh, was the ABS system activated? If so, when? Uh, stability control status, the time between events, the tire pressure warning status in some systems, great evidence for a driver's claim that a tire blowout caused them to lose control. Uh, you may get some insight to whether that was occurring or not uh, based on that data element. Uh, the gear selector position, vehicle roll angle, and a whole lot more. Uh, the auto manufacturers use this tool themselves, uh, actually, for their own internal investigations and safety research. So as a result of that, the auto manufacturers have been adding more and more data elements that are recorded in their event data recorders. Uh, what constitutes an event then, as far as event data recorders are concerned? Uh, remember, an event must occur for data to be recorded. An event occurs when a vehicle experiences a very sudden speed change, i.e. a crash, that meets or exceeds a trigger threshold set by the auto manufacturers. There are two trigger thresholds that may cause data to be recorded to the event data recorder, so there are two types of events. And the two types of events uh, are a deployment event. A deployment event occurs when a safety system in a vehicle is deployed, and the most common uh, of which is the airbag. So an airbag deployment, if an airbag was deployed, uh, the crash data was saved to the event data recorder. And then there's a non-deployment event. Uh, this occurs when a vehicle experiences a very sudden speed change, again most likely from a crash, that didn't deploy an airbag, but it did meet a certain trigger threshold that was set by the auto manufacturer to record uh, the data. So let's go over some of the ways you can use EDR data as part of your claims evaluations. Uh, fraud detection is probably the most uh, common use of crash data by insurance companies today, uh, both intentional fraud and unintentional fraud. As you know, vague, misleading statements can be forms of unintentional insurance fraud, and those misleading statements can often be exposed or dispelled with vehicle crash data. Uh, crash data can be used in many scenarios to either corroborate or invalidate statements when other ev evidence doesn't exist and impact severity. We talked a little bit about that. It's indicated as delta V, and it's used to assess the potential for bodily injury in a traffic accident. Hit while unattended or parked unoccupied claims are a common fraud practice. I'm sure you're aware of that. Uh, EDR data can be very powerful evidence in these types of cases. So you have an insured, it gets into an accident, uh, they drive home, park the car in front of their house, uh, and then claim it was hit overnight by an unknown vehicle, a hit and run. Uh, an airbag control module that's mounted in the car, uh, like any other computer, has to be powered up to function, and therefore has to be powered up to record data. So if a car was truly parked and off when it was hit, it doesn't matter how severe the impact uh, was, there won't be any data stored on the event data recorder because power was not available to the uh, airbag control module when the crash occurred. However, if an event was recorded, that means the car was on and possibly in motion. EDR data can be used to dispel the claim that it was parked and off when the crash occurred. Uh, we have a lot of feedback from some of our insurance companies that use this, uh, the tool for this type of case 
and they say it's really uh, not uncommon when uh, the insured is presented with the EDR data, they just withdraw their claim. They've been caught. Uh, they realized that uh, you know that the EDR data showed showed that the the car was going 21 miles an hour when this crash occurred, and you state that it was parked in front of your house and off overnight. Uh, the EDR data dispelled that, and uh, the claimant uh, just withdraws their claim and just uh, wants it all to go away. So this tool is really useful for hit while unattended uh, type of claims. How about multiple impact collisions, such as an inline chain reaction crash. Uh, who hit whom first? Uh, in these types of cases, uh, the parties are always pointing fingers at each other. Uh, there were no witnesses. Uh, physical evidence at the scene in these types of cases will likely not answer the question of who hit whom first. So you're left with unknown uh, as to the cause of the collision and likely pay at least a portion of the claim. Uh, so how can EDR data answer the question of who hit whom first? In this example, uh, data was downloaded just from the gray car, the car in the middle, and it showed that two separate events or impacts occurred in rapid succession. Uh, the data showed the first impact to have a positive delta V. That indicates that the vehicle was pushed forward. So the first impact, uh, the, the gray car was hit from behind and pushed forward. Uh, the second impact showed a negative delta V, indicating that the gray car hit an object, in this case, the white car in front of it. Again, you likely could not have determined this by physical evidence at the scene. Most EDRs record whether or not the seat belt was buckled for seats that have a corresponding airbag. Uh, this information can be useful in determining the potential for injury of a driver or passenger. Uh, most automotive seats uh, that have a corresponding airbag are equipped with sensors to detect the presence of an occupant. Many seats contain weight classification sensors and or seat track uh, position sensors as well. Uh, the information from these sensors is used uh, by the airbag computer to determine the precise moment to deploy an airbag to best protect the occupant. But many EDRs record this information, which can be used to determine not only the mere presence of a person, but also give an indication as to the physical size of the occupant. It's very useful information to detect and dispel the jump-in type of fraud cases. Uh, many newer vehicles uh, are being equipped with rear seat airbag systems, and these seats will have some form of occupant detection that may be recorded in the EDR as well. So if you have a case where a driver stated uh, there was a passenger in the vehicle that sustained injury and you have your doubts, EDR data can shed some light as to the presence of a passenger or passengers at the time of the crash. If you suspect a driver switch, possibly because of an excluded driver that happened to be driving at the time of the crash, if your driver's 6'2", 230 pounds, but the driver's seat showed to be in the forwardmost position in a mid-weight classification, you can use this data to press your insured about the true facts. Now think about it. Do you have to change the seat position because your husband or wife last drove your car? Uh, EDR data may be able to capture that. Uh, you, Scott? Card? Yes, go ahead, Dan. I want to answer a question. Uh, someone had a question about one of the data elements uh, regarding the accelerator pedal, and that's typically what the vehicle records. As you know, many cars are drive-by-wire, and that's usually the percentage of the uh, pedal, accelerator pedal, that was depressed, not necessarily the speed of the vehicle. Was the person on the pedal or off? And if the cruise control was set or not, that's typically a data element that would be included if the cruise control was engaged or disengaged uh, during that event. Thanks. All right. All right. So uh, EDR data uh, can often expose certain types of staged crashes as well. Uh, in this example, the red car is stopped for a red traffic light. Your insured pro approaches from the rear and safely comes to a complete stop. Uh, the driver of the red car intentionally puts their car in reverse and intentionally collides into your insured's vehicle. Uh, the driver of the red car claims he was injured due to being rear-ended by your insured. Now, without any witnesses, what are you left with? Basically, you're left with damage that's, well, it's consistent with the driver of the red car's statement. So you're able to download EDR data from your insured's vehicle. The data clearly shows uh, that your vehicle came to a complete stop three seconds prior to impact. The data also showed a negative delta V, 
uh, indicating that it was struck from the front. Does that change the outcome of this claim? And those are just a couple examples of how insurance companies are using EDR data. Uh, crash data can be used in many scenarios to help answer questions related to your investigation. So it's not just limited to these types of examples that we showed here today. Uh, these are just a couple of examples of how the data can be used for specific types of claims. Uh, before we talk about how to retrieve EDR data, uh, let's go over some consent issues uh, you need to know about. A federal statute, it's the Driver Privacy Act of 2015, established that EDR data is the property of the vehicle owner or lessee. Uh, it also established that no one can access or download EDR data without the owner's consent or a court order. Uh, insurance companies have a duty to investigate auto insurance claims, do they not? Uh, most insurance companies using the CDR tool have a cooperation clause written into auto policies uh, that states an insured must cooperate with the insurance company that's investigating the claim. This may include downloading EDR data from the insured's vehicle depending on your company's policy. So let's talk about retrieving or downloading the data. How do you get this data? Remember, in most cases, the data is contained in the airbag control module, and that's the module you'll need to communicate with. The easiest way to communicate with the airbag control module is by connecting to a vehicle's OBD port. I'm sure you're familiar with that. It's the uh, connection port beneath the dash uh, that you've seen mechanics connect their scan tools to. So let's go over uh, downloading data through the OBD2 port. Uh, to go through the OBD port, uh, typically two things need to be present. First, the car's electrical system must be intact, and you have to be able to power up the car's electrical system. Uh, a jump box can be used uh, to power the car if all you're dealing with is a dead or a weak battery. And second, in most cases, you'll need the vehicle's ignition key. Uh, you don't need to start the engine, but you will need to, uh, the key to power up the car's electrical system. Uh, so if you're dealing with a severely damaged vehicle where the electrical system ha has been compromised, you'll likely not be able to download the data through the OBD port. And in that case, uh, you'd need to perform what's called a direct to module download to retrieve the data. Uh, this is done by connecting directly to the airbag control module. Uh, essentially, you disconnect the ACM from the car's wiring harness and use a specific connection cable that matches the ACM. Uh, this can be done while the ACM is mounted in a vehicle, uh, or the ACM can be removed from the car and downloaded on a bench top or other work surface, and a specific connection cable is required for direct to module downloads. Most insurance companies rely on outside assistant, uh, assistance for this type of download, but we wanted to let you know that the capability does exist. So if you encounter a vehicle uh, where it's got some severe front end damage and you're having trouble going through the uh, OBD uh, port, to do the download. Uh, all is not lost. The capability does exist uh, to uh, get the data by connecting directly to the module. There are a few EDR retrieval tools on the market that cover the various auto manufacturers. Now each of these available EDR tools require the use of a Windows-based uh, laptop PC that's not included with the tools. So you'll need to provide your own laptop to be used uh, to obtain the download. We'll be concentrating on the Bosch CDR tool, as it's the industry standard tool that supports the majority of auto manufacturers. Uh, we'll uh, briefly discuss some other EDR retrieval tools that are available for specific manufacturers, including Tesla, uh, the Hyundai EDR tool, and the Kia EDR tool. As mentioned, the Bosch CDR tool is the industry standard uh, EDR data retrieval tool. Uh, the Bosch CDR tool, as well as the other tools we'll be discussing here today, uh, supports passenger cars, light trucks, and SUVs. The tools do not support heavy trucks or buses. Uh, there are some EDR tools available for, uh, for heavy trucks, commercial trucks, uh, but we won't be discussing those today. The Bosch tool supports over 50 brands of vehicles across more than 18 auto manufacturers. Uh, of note, Subaru and Mitsubishi coverage was recently added to the Bosch CDR tool, and prior to them being added to the Bosch tool, uh, each of them had their own independent EDR tool, and uh, they cost about six to $7,000 each uh, for the Subaru tool and the Mitsubishi tool. Uh, but now that coverage is included with the Bosch tool. 
Now, the Bosch CDR tool consists of both software and hardware components to access and download the data contained in event data recorders. It should be noted that the Bosch CDR tool, as well as the others for that matter, images or copies the data contained in the EDR. It does not alter, erase, or manipulate the data. So you don't have to worry about being accused of changing the data, altering it, erasing it, removing it. Uh, the tools are not capable of doing that. Once the data has been imaged, the software component of the tool translates the data into a human readable form, and that's called the CDR report. Uh, the Bosch CDR Pro Toolkit sells for $7,100. Uh, it's available through Crash Data Group. Uh, the kit contains all of the hardware needed to access and download data from any supported vehicle through a vehicle's OBD port. Uh, it also includes a one-year CDR software subscription. Uh, the Bosch software is sold as a subscription because it's constantly being updated. Uh, updates include new vehicle coverage, uh, next year's models, for example, uh, any new manufacturers that are added, uh, any changes or updates to the existing data parameters may be contained in an update as well, and any changes to the software platform uh, would be contained in an update as well. Uh, the current price for a one-year subscription renewal is $1,050, but again, the first year is included in the price of the Pro Toolkit. Uh, the CDR900 interface module was introduced just last year, and it's included with the CDR Pro Toolkit. Uh, the CDR900 is required to download data from any Subaru or Mitsubishi vehicle as they were just added to the Bosch system. Uh, it will also be required to download data from any new airbag system added by any of the manufacturers moving forward. Uh, so for those of you that are currently using the CDR tool, uh, the CDR900 is an essential upgrade to the CAN Plus module you're currently using. Both the CAN Plus module and the CDR900 are included in the Pro Tool Kit that's being sold to new customers. Remember the capability exists to download the data by connecting directly to the airbag control module. Uh, the direct module cables are sold individually. Uh, the cables are typically $165 each and the software uh, for the tool will indicate which cable you need for the year, make, and model vehicle you're working with. So that's an overview of the Bosch CDR tool. Again, it's the industry standard EDR retrieval tool and supports the overwhelming majority of auto manufacturers. Tesla EDR retrieval capability became available just last year. Uh, the hardware kit sells for uh, $995. It's also available through Crash Data Group and it contains all the hardware needed to download any Model S, Model X, or Model 3 Tesla, both in vehicle or by connecting directly to the uh, airbag control module in a Tesla vehicle. The software uh, and translation services for Tesla are free of charge through Tesla's website. Uh, you just download the EDR data file using the hardware kit, uh, then simply upload the file through tes Tesla's website. Uh, the data is translated there, and an EDR report is generated in the form of a PDF document, and that's with the Tesla kit. Uh, the Hyundai EDR tool supports uh, 2013 and newer Hyundai vehicles only. Uh, it has both OBD capability and direct to module capability. Uh, the Hyundai tool sold through a company called GIT of America. It sells for about $6,500 and has an annual software fee of around $500. And that's simply for 2013 and newer model Hyundais. Uh, the Kia EDR tool also supports uh, 2013 and newer Kia vehicles only. Uh, it has uh, both OBD and direct module download capability. Uh, the Kia tool is sold through Snap-on and sells for about $7,100 and has an annual software fee of around $500 a year. Um, and again, uh, that would support 2013 and newer Kia vehicles only. And those are uh, the currently available EDR retrieval tools for passenger cars, light trucks, and SUVs. So let's go over some training. Uh, it's highly recommended uh, that you receive some form of training, both on how to physically use the equipment and also uh, how to use the recovered data and how to apply it to your investigation or claim evaluation. Uh, the Crash Academy, it's a division of Crash Data Group, has put together an online training course. It's how to use the Bosch CDR tool. It's a great foundational course on how to physically use the software and hardware components of the Bosch tool 
to successfully perform a download and generate a report. Uh, the online course does not go into how to use the data, analyze it, or apply it to your investigation. Uh, it's a great foundational course to how to use the tool. And uh, of note, uh, the online course is included with every CDR Pro Tool Kit that's purchased. Uh, Collision Safety Institute has developed a specific training curriculum uh, for using EDR data for insurance applications. Uh, they have CDR technician trainers located throughout the country. Uh, they provide hands-on classroom style training. Uh, they can also work with you and your company to conduct private training sessions for your organization. Uh, they offer two courses specifically that were developed uh, for the insurance industry. They're great courses uh, that cover learning how to use the equipment and then how to apply the recovered data to specific types of insurance claims. Uh, these courses are occasionally hosted at our facility here in uh, Southern California and at other uh, locations around the country. Uh, they can also come to your location, teach these courses, or help you develop a custom curriculum for your company. So we here at Crash Data Group can work with you uh, to point you in the right direction, work on you to develop a training curriculum that best meets your needs and uh, that of your company. And that concludes our presentation today. Uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us here today and hope that you have a better understanding of EDR data and how it can be uh, extremely beneficial uh, with claim evaluations and in ex exposing insurance fraud. Uh, I think you'll find uh, the data used in insurance in the insurance industry uh, can greatly help you and assist you through your claims evaluation, weed out fraud, and uh, not be paying claims uh, that otherwise you would have paid a portion of or the whole claim, uh, you can subrogate a lot of these claims to another party if you have the right evidence. And I think you'll find EDR data uh, is that right evidence. If uh, you'd like some more specific information, please feel free to contact either Dan or myself. Like say Dan manages the more majority of our insurance uh, industry accounts and can answer any questions you may have. Uh, I can also assist you if Dan is not available. Our contact information is on the screen here. And so with that, uh, we'll take a few more questions. If anyone has any questions, just go ahead and type those in and we'll uh, try and answer them the best we can. But thank you again for attending and hope you got uh, something out of it today.